So in this part of the Chicago style lecture, I'm going to talk about how you cite a book. So this is something I've copied directly out of the Chicago style or Chicago manual style. So when you cite a book in its footnote form, you write the author's first and last names in the normal order. So Malcolm Gladwell is the author of the book. Then you write the title of the book, the tipping point, colon, colon, subtitle of the book. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about how you can identify that later. Then you, in parentheses, you write the place of publication. That's a city, colon, here, Boston. And the publisher's name, in this case, it was Little, comma, Brown. The date of publication, here you are, the years. And then the page numbers and the page number. So like, let's say you quoted the tipping point, you would put the page numbers at the end. Uh, I'm sorry, the page numbers that you were quoting. And this is a footnote, right? This goes at the bottom of your paper. This is not the bibliography. The bibliography goes at the end. This is so that it's clear to people where you got this information. So I want to give you kind of a concrete example of where you would find this information on a book. So for example, this is a book written by a man named Peter Deuce. His, his name is very easy to find. And then you'll notice it has, here's the title, The Abacus and the Sword, The Japanese Penetration of Korea, comma, 1895 to 1910. That's the title. That's the subtitle. And a lot of times you have this with history texts. You'll have title, subtitle, years. So title, colon, subtitle, comma, years. Now you may say, well, how do you know what the subtitle is and what the, the title is? Well, here it's relatively easy and usually it's done like this. They're different sized fonts. So the abacus and the sword would be the title, colon, subtitle, comma, years. Uh, publisher, University of California Press. But there, notice that there's several places where it was published. The rule is you use the first. So you would say Berkeley, colon, University of California Press. Now, one thing that drives me nuts, and this is very different from books published in Korea, they don't say the year of publication, right? All the useful information you need for the bibliography is on one page except the year. Usually you got to go on a, another page. And it's 1995. So there's the year, 1995. Now, sometimes they have multiple years. As a general rule, I like to use the most recent year. All right, so if it's multiple years, you use the most recent because that's the edition you're using. So if this was a footnote... Right, first and last name Peter Deuce, comma the abacus and the sword, the Jap colon Japanese penetration of Korea, comma years. And notice this is in italics. The book title should be in italics. Why? It makes it clear where the book title is. That's why you have all these punctuation or things is to make it clear which element is which. And once you learn Chicago style, you can tell just by looking at the entry what is what. What is the title? What's well, a part in italics? Now, it's very important that you learn how to make a footnote properly. And also, I need to tell you what a footnote is. And I also need to show you how to do an end dash. Sometimes people put hyphens. Technically speaking, a hyphen does not show range. An end dash shows range. This is a, a, oops, this right here is an end dash. It shows a year range. You also use it to show a page range. So I need to get out of my PowerPoint really quickly and show you an example of what I mean. So this is a footnote. All right, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I want to provide some information that I think that the reader might want. And I need to give a citation, but I don't want to break up the flow of the paper. So what I do then is I add a footnote. And there's my footnote, number two. So the sentence is that Jenkins would play such a role becomes all the more surprising lie the fact that he was the son of a pioneering Methodist missionary and had previously served honorably as interpreter for the American Consul in Shanghai. Footnote two. There we go. The English language study that does devote a good deal of attentions to Frederick Jenkins' Strand, 2002. Right? Technically speaking, this part is not Chicago style. This journal article, they use a different one, but that's not that, but that's okay because I'm just trying to tell you how footnotes work. Right? So. I had information I need to give. I wanted to give a reference. I wanted to say, if you want to learn more about Frederick Jenkins, you want to look at this guy. But I didn't want to interrupt my flow of language. So I have a footnote, right? That's kind of the purpose. 
Now, sometimes what students do is they'll just go to Indie, they'll just go to um, this section here, the footer, and they'll try and add footnotes themselves. You don't want to do that, right? You need to add the footnote properly because otherwise it messes up the formatting. So the way you add a footnote is very simple. Let's say we want to add a footnote here. You go to References, Insert Footnote. Boom! The footnote entered. Right, the footnote entered. I'll hit Control Z to undo that, but it's very simple. You want a footnote here? Put it there. Boom, very easy. But as a general rule, you put them after the punctuation. So it's not here. So students sometimes want to do that. That's not correct. Footnote goes after the punctuation. So what's also important to understand, remember I just made a big deal about how you want to make sure that you learn how to insert the footnotes properly. That's because you may move around your paper. And so what happens is one, you may put, uh, you know, footnote two, you may move things so that the footnote three now comes before footnote two. And footnotes, if they're done properly, will automatically renumber. So notice that footnote two starts with this part, the English language study. And footnote three says, for examples of the treatment of the Oprah incident. So what I'm going to do now, let's say that I, I actually want this sentence to come first. So I'm taking the part that was footnote three and putting it first. Notice the footnotes automatically changed. When I copied and pasted it, this was footnote three. But when I put it in front of footnote, um, another footnote, it became two. It renumbered them automatically, and you can see they switched it around. So that's why it's very important that you actually use the footnotes properly. Remember, it's insert footnote found in the reference tabs. And usually there's other ways to do that too. Now, the other thing I want to show you is notice this here is a hyphen. This here is an end dash. Hyphens are used, they have their own usage, like in this case, English language sources, because it's describing sources, it has a hyphen. But page ranges or years use an end dash. How do you make that? Well, let's, I have to kind of scooch in here. So the way you do that, like let's say word, then you put a space, comma, space, word. So we got that nice hyphen, but when I push space, it becomes an end dash. Then I can just go back through here and do like that. So like I said, you just, let's try it with numbers. 110 space hyphen, 112 space. And boom, we've got our end dash. Very easy to make, All right? Very easy to make. So let's go now back to the PowerPoint. So that's how you make a footnote. Let's see, there we go. And the end dash. So now for the bibliography, the thing that goes at the end, it's a little bit different. Now it's the author's last name or family name, uh, then the comma, author's first name, title of the book, colon, subtitle of the book, also in italics, place of publication, comma, publisher's name, comma, date of publication. It's not in parentheses. So here, Gladwell, comma, Malcolm, then the title in italics, place of publication, publisher, year, no parentheses. It's general rule, commas become periods with the bibliography and notice it's indented so this would have become this book here right that we were working with here here's the um footnote version it becomes this deuce comma peter the abacus and the sword the japanese penetration of korea 1895 to 1910 berkeley university of california press 1995 very simple it's just plugging in the information correctly if you just have a model you just follow the model. It's really easy to do.